What this slide does not say in my title, and I think that's the most important part of my title, is Dr. Menon and Dr. Bhandari trained. So I, I have had opportunity a couple of times speaking in Delhi, and I always acknowledged what I've gained at Vatikuti Institute. This is for the first time that I'm able to do so in front of Dr. Manon, Dr. Peabody, and Dr. Elder. Why do we need lymphadenectomy in prostate surgery? Because when lymph nodes are positive, it's thought that it's a systemic disease. And as we started getting more and more localized prostate cancer, or early prostate cancer in lymph uh, PSA era, post PSA era, the rate came down to 2 to 6 percent. But still it is thought that it is important for staging and probably there is some direct survival benefit by doing lymphadenectomy. Staging is important because you can institute treatment if there is lymph node positivity. And this is the randomized controlled trial in which messing showed that there is a benefit of early start of androgen deprivation therapy in patients who had lymph node positive disease. As you can see in this curve, that there is a significant difference when androgen deprivation therapy was started in the test arm. On the flip side, there have been a couple of studies which showed that there is no evidence, there is no difference in survival. My academic boss, Eric Klein, this is his paper, which did not show any difference. Similarly, Claude Abou from France, he compared perineal prostatectomy without lymph node dissection and retropubic prostatectomy with lymph node dissection and showed no benefit. However, these two papers are criticized because they didn't define what their lymph node dissection meant and they were retrospective studies. Not all lymph node positive diseases are bad diseases, and this was shown very eloquently by Struder. And what he showed, that if there is macrometastasis or less than two lymph node positive, there is probably a survival benefit. Later on, actually recently, Karakovich, in a very large study from SEER database with 128,000 patients, showed that if you have done lymph node dissection and lymph nodes were negative, they have a slight better survival, cancer-specific mortality, as compared to patients who did not have lymph node dissection. This is another study from Italy of about 800 cases. This is for the first time that someone has shown that more lymph nodes, if you dissect more than 10 lymph nodes for intermediate risk and high-risk disease, there is a benefit of survival. When we started doing this uh, lymph node dissection with robotics in early 2000s, um, we were doing a standard lymph node dissection, which included external lake lymph node group and obturator group. Around 2002, there was some evidence that increased, increasing the lymph node template gives you some benefit in terms of better lymph node positive yield. And Hadley showed that in his landmark paper, where he did an extended lymph node dissection all the way up to the erotic bifurcation in nine zone template. I think most of the thought process changed from this paper from Struder, where he defined lymph nodes into two discrete zones and into three discrete zones. And at that point, at Henry Ford uh, uh, Hospital in Vatican Urology Institute, we started doing uh, uh, extended lymph node dissection for high-risk patients. When, in 2009, I moved out to Cleveland Clinic, Florida, my biggest question was that how I'm going to define my program. And I looked back, and I found that all the nomograms were made, especially the Parton's nomogram, was based on a standard lymph node dissection. This was Briganti et al. in 2007 for the first time. They presented a nomogram which was based on extended lymph node dissection. And this was validated twice since 2007, internally and once externally by Karakovich. 
And in 2011, they came out with a modification of that, which includes the number of positive cores, percentage of positive cores. And I think currently this is one of the most sensitive nomograms in terms of doing extended lymph node dissection, which gives you a very good prediction. Uh, the negative predictive value of this is 98.4%, which means that if you take a 5% cutoff in this nomogram, the chances that you will leave, a, if you will not do a dissection, lymph node dissection, in a patient who has positive lymph node is only 1.6%. So when I started doing in my own program, I just followed what we were doing at Vatikuti Urology Institute, which was low and intermediate risk patients underwent internal iliac lymph node dissection, and high risk patient underwent extended lymph node dissection. And the reason was that my patient population was like most of the US patient population, with large majority of patients with primary Gleason 3 cancers. But I had to change my strategy very soon, and this was the reason. As you will see that all these post-pre-op biopsies of primary Gleason 3, there was a huge up-migration in Gleason's core after their biopsy when the whole, uh, whole prostate was removed and examined under microscope. In simple words, about 74% of Gleason 6 were up-migrated to at least Gleason 7. And 37% of these up-migrations were so bad that they changed the risk stratification of the patient. So all of a sudden I felt that I'm doing a long lymph node dissection for, a wrong lymph node dissection for these patients. So I changed my strategy and after eight months of my practice I started doing internally iliac lymph node dissection only in low risk patients whereas I started using extended lymph node dissection for intermediate and high risk patients. In two years, first two years of my practice, uh, I did 90 or 49 patients with internal iliac lymph node dissection, 157 patients with extended lymph node dissection, and 20 patients I did standard lymph node dissection. These are the patients in which extended lymph node dissection was indicated, but because they were on chronic anticoagulation therapy. I decided not to do an extended lymph node dissection. Another, in three patients, I had a new assistant. And when you do extended lymph node dissection, a lot depends on your assistant. So I decided not to go ahead and do an extended lymph node dissection in those patients. In 14 patients, I did not do lymph node dissection at all. Six patients was patient choice, and these were the patients who had low risk. There were four patients who were on anticoagulation for chronic DVT. So I decided that I'm not going to disturb anything near their veins. Two patients were post proctectomy, they had rectal pouch, so particles were coming over the lymph node uh, uh, area. One patient had extensive pelvic fracture in hardware, and one patient had AAA treated with vascular endograft. So I decided not to do lymph node dissection because there was extensive fibrosis there. So as you can see, that out of total 240 patients in first year, uh, I got one positive lymph node through internal iliac lymph node dissection, and 29 out of 157 patients in extended lymph node dissection. My lymph node, uh, mean lymph node yield was 10.5% in extended lymph node dissection. The overall lymph node yield was 9.1% for every patient, but in extended lymph node dissection group, it was 13.5%. Whenever you do extended lymph node dissection, you increase the risk of complication, and the most uh, common complication is lymphocele. And I did have my share of lymphocele. I had three patients with lymphocele. One patient presented just after a month, another one after two months, and last one which was there after three months. One was on steroids because of his fibromyalgia, and these two I have only technique to blame. Uh, no one had DVT, no one had 
ureteric injury or nerve injury. It's very important that we pay a very close attention to technique in these patients, especially all the major lymphatics. Either they need to be sealed well with coagulation or with clip. Because, as you'll see in this publication from Vip Patel, that even in hand of an experienced surgeon like Vip Patel, when he does extended lymph node dissection, he has reported 15.4% symptomatic lymphocele. And that too for a median lymph node yield of six lymph nodes per dissection. So that underlines the importance of a very meticulous dissection and clipping every possible lymph node, uh, lymphatics. What is there in future? Probably our imaging technologies will become so sophisticated that we don't need to do lymph node dissection for staging. And one of the things which is coming up in Horizon is lymphotrophic superparamagnetic nanoparticle enhanced MRI. And this has about 100% sensitivity and 98% specificity in terms of detecting lymph node metastasis as small as two millimeter. So this technology has a lot of promise. The first paper was published in 19, uh, in 2003 in New England Journal, and we just had a follow-up in Euro European Urology in 2009. So this technology, as it becomes widely uh, applicable, will see some major changes in practices of lymph node dissection. Another thing with Da Vinci, enhancing its <coughs> armamentarium of augmented vision, maybe we will have a gamma camera overlay video or uh, fluorescein lymphography. Thank you very much for your attention.